had a chance to get a couple practices in. Uh, really grateful for that, being able to do that, get some type of normalcy going on with our group. It's really excited about the opportunity to play against a ranked team. I didn't really care who it was. It just so happens to be Mississippi State. And so really excited to test our, our ladies and see where and see how we handle it. David. Hey, yo, what can you tell us uh, from an update standpoint on who will be available tomorrow that has been out the last two games? Well, uh, because Nikki and I are close, I'm not going to tell you anything <laughs> because I want them to prepare for everybody. Uh, what I can say is uh, we hope to have players back. I just don't know who it's going to be. This game uh, obviously is 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 part of a bigger rivalry. Uh, yeah. You know they they've had a tremendous amount of success over the last couple of years, and uh, they can certainly see you guys coming. Uh, is 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 there an undertow to this game tomorrow? Maybe that uh, you know obviously you guys want to show that uh, you're taking another step, and maybe they want to show that that separation is still there. I'm not really sure what their intent is other than to win the basketball game. Um, and, and I know for us, ours is, is to grow. I think the rivalries are in large part made for fans. It's not so much as, as far as like the teams are concerned because at the end of the day, I didn't care who we was playing next. We have to show growth. Um, it just so happens as Mississippi State. Now we respect it and, and my players understand what this game means to the community and probably to JB and Snutter, um, all of us. We, we understand what it means, but our goal is just to get better. You know, um, we, we had a little, we had to pivot a little bit with COVID. Um, that thing came at, at an incredible time for us when I felt like we were on a roll. Uh, but every team is going to have to do that. We can't sit and feel sorry for ourselves. I just know that we're going to be ready to compete tomorrow, and and I'm excited to see where we are versus a ranked team. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Nick? You talk about you and Nikki being close. Just how far back does that relationship go? Man, I think I've been knowing Nikki ever, ever since she she went to South Carolina. Because when I was at Jacksonville, I would always go to South Carolina to watch their practices. And she was an assistant then. And so her and I have really spent a lot of time. I've publicly cheered Nikki on at Old Dominion. Um, I called her before she got the Mississippi State job and had a conversation with her about it. I mean, uh, you know, I have respect for her and her family. And um, I'm really happy for her, you know, Let's just be honest, like people of color, we don't get good jobs and she lucked up and got a good job, you know, um, and I think she's doing a good job with it. So it stems that far back and uh, her and I talk, you know, often and help each other out as we're in the same state and trying to navigate through the SEC. Just from an encore perspective, how are her teams different than Vix and people mm -hmm. being familiar with Mississippi State? Well, you know, so it's two completely styles, different styles. Uh, but you can tell that Nikki has experience in the SEC. She knows how to beat teams. She knows how to play them. You know, the SEC has a certain type of rhythm. And just her, it, it, it took me a while to kind of figure that out, you know, because I didn't have experience coaching in the SEC, whereas she has. Um, and so, you know, you you also can tell that they're adjusting to a new coach. So they're still figuring things out. I mean, clearly you hadn't heard them because, you know, I think they only lost two games. And so um, obviously they know they're figuring things out as they go. Uh, whereas by the time I got here and Vic was here, he had already had that thing rolling. Um, and there was a surety about it. It seems like sometimes they're still trying to adjust to what she wants, um, but nevertheless, they're ranked. They've been beating teams, and we have to be ready to go. For your players, just 
how valuable do you think it was getting that win on Thursday to kind of end the losing streak and refresh and say, okay, now we can move forward? Yeah, you know, human nature is a beast. You know, um, we, when, Nick, when, when we won the game, it was almost like, I'll give you an example. Like my, my daughter, she swears there's a monster in her closet. And so my husband has to go in and say, there's no monster in the closet. Turn on the light and show her. When we won the game, I promise you guys, I was the only one that was like, yeah, let's go, great win. Everybody else was in shock. My staff, nobody knew how to react because <laughs> for the longest, they hadn't had the experience. And so it was almost like they were thinking like, is someone going to come out and say, hey, put another 30 seconds on the clock or send us into overtime? It was like they couldn't believe it. It was a huge weight. I talked to my coaches about it. They said it was just a sigh of relief. You know, for the longest time, this has been covering over our heads. So now we can move forward um, and move on. Because for me, I was pumped. Um, that we found a way with everything that we've been going through with this COVID thing, you know? Uh, and, and so now we're over it and we're ready to move on. <laughs> Jake? Hey coach, just that you talked about after the, the win the other night about the growth of how they were learning to close out that game, I guess, and compared to Monday's game against LSU. Looking back at the tape, what did you kind of see you know, your girls and how they handle Every time Auburn would kind of surge up, they, they knew how to close them down. Yeah, you know, it was a complete uh, 180. The first game, and, and, and I think, like, people don't remember, too, we've only played eight games. So at the time when we played LSU, that was our seventh game for a new team. And so I even handled the Auburn game differently because I almost, like, completely controlled the fourth quarter just because I knew that last time we were in that situation, we totally just crumbled. Um, and so it just shows that my team wasn't ready uh, for a situation like that yet. So instead this time, I decided to take matters into my own hands, control the tempo, control the pace. And then our, our girls like Val just totally lost it versus LSU going into halftime. Uh, allowed them to go on a 6-0 run. Well, this time she recognized, she dribbled out. We had shots. We could have we could have shot it earlier in the clock. We managed the clock. Those type of things you have to do when you have the lead. Um, and you have and we had to learn through and grow through that. And so I'm tired of going through losses every single time. So it was just really cool to find a way to get a win. And and we watched film for about an hour and a half on that game, kind of just analyzing it and seeing where we can be better. David? Coach, we've kind of seen it the last couple of games, but in your words, what is the difference in your team with Maddie Scott on the floor and then without her? Maddie just brings an incredible amount of like energy and intensity and then as far as stat sheet's concerned, the rebounding, you know, um, she's, she, she's long, even though she's only 6'2", like her wingspan is incredible. And so she gets her hands on balls. Uh, and, and you know what it did? It made us uncomfortable because my starting lineup had been the same. Like I hadn't made any changes to my lineup. Um, and so there was a comfort that everybody was learning to have with her on the floor. Uh, Maddie is also a winner. You know, she's Madonna's All-American, EYBL championship, uh, high school champion. You know, all she knows how to do is win. And so she brought that on the floor and, and we, we missed that. 